Let me paint you a common scene. In their second year, medical students dive into subjects of pathology and microbiology. Suddenly, every rash, ache or cough in themselves or their friends looks like a sign of something dramatic, anything from an annoying virus to cancer. Luckily, they are usually wrong. Actually, there is so much sudden information overload and people expect them to be experts already. If you do become expert clinicians, good for them. The rest of us, well, we lean on those scans and tests. And nowadays, with ChatGPT and its other AI friends being so popular, basically anyone with a smartphone thinks they have got a medical degree. Sir William Osler, the father of modern medicine, said, Medicine is a science of uncertainty and an art of probability. Figuring out what's wrong with a patient can sometimes be tough. It's not just about having a cool tech or being super smart. Hi, I'm Gaurav and you're watching Gut Instincts. Today, let's dig deep into the actual symptoms of gallstones and more importantly, why they happen. To figure out if someone has gallstone related issues, we really need their medical history and a physical exam. You might be thinking, why all the fuss? Just scan for the stones. But hold that thought. Modern medicine sometimes forgets the art of just listening to a patient. These days, we are so enamored with scans, we often skip over the basics. Like just, you know, talking to patient and asking good questions. Here's a cool thing. Finding gallstones on a scan doesn't always mean they are making you sick. Sometimes, the problem is somewhere else and identifying it might involve more than one scan. To be honest, that might, might raise some eyebrows, like it's all about making some extra money. But trust me, it's about getting the diagnosis right, not just chasing some scan images. Scans often pick up harmless lumps and bumps, otherwise known as incidental omas. Similarly, it is important for a doctor to be sure that gallstones seen in your scan are the actual reason for your symptoms. Now, I'm not going to give you a, another checklist of stone symptoms. The internet is flooded with them. In fact, symptom memorization is like using Google Maps from 2005. You'll probably get somewhere, but probably not where the patient really needs to go. Instead, on this channel, we explore the why behind the symptoms. Let's map this journey together. Edward Hornet, a 20th century American author and educator, said, if you don't ask the right questions, you don't get the right answers. Asking questions is the ABC of diagnosis. Here's how your liver's plumbing works. It squirts bile into a tree-like network of bile ducts, which drain into the main bile duct, then to your small intestine. The gallbladder is like a storage tank for bile acids sitting right beside the main duct. Think about your bathroom's drainage system. That will help you understand the concepts of this topic in a better way. If the drainage system gets blocked, things will, things will get messy quickly. Now, what exactly is a gallstone? It's not yesterday's food stuck in there. Gallstones form when chemicals in the bile clump together. In 70 to 80% of these cases, the symptoms sit quietly, never cause any symptom. They are like those guests at a party you didn't know were there and you leave without saying goodbye. These are the silent stones. Let's zoom into action. Come into the first main, main symptom, biliary pain. If a stone moves and gets stuck from the gallbladder into the cystic duct, the thin pipe out of the gallbladder, pressure builds up. The gallbladder distends much like a balloon, causing sudden severe pain. If a hollow organ in the abdomen, example gallbladder or intestine, suddenly become distended, it can cause severe pain. Where you feel the pain depends on where the organ is. Coming to the biliary pain, it, it usually occurs after intense stimulation of the gallbladder. In earlier videos, I explained that fatty and protein-rich food cause your gallbladder to squeeze hard. This pain often starts after meals. That often includes food like paneer, chana masala, or rich ghee-based chicken or mutton biryani. This pain often occurs in the upper mid or right side of the belly. You might also feel it near your right shoulder blade. It can wake you in the night. It's steady, intense, and can cause can last from half an hour to up to six hours. Think of it as your gallbladder's way of filing a very loud complaint. It's not a daily thing, more like every few days or weeks. 
it's not typically caused by bowel movement or physical activity the pain is typically unaffected by antacid medications some patients feel so awful they end up vomiting fun fact any severe abdominal pain can cause vomiting due to nerve and chemical signals from the gut stimulating the brain's vomiting center leading to a protective reflex response most of the time the stone slips back from the cystic duct into the gallbladder unblocking the duct pain eases sometimes with a little help from the emergency department of a nearby hospital with some painkiller shots this my friends is the classic biliary colic now coming to symptoms caused by complications caused due to gallstones for about 1 in 5 people with biliary colic the stone remains stuck in the in the duct cystic duct this causes bile to bile to accumulate and pressure to build up leading to inflammation of the gallbladder at this stage the inflammation isn't yet an in- infection however bacteria can enter the stagnant bile over time and trigger an infection in the already inflamed gallbladder this condition is called acute calculus cholecystitis and can become quite serious without timely treatment in these cases the pain becomes more severe and lasts for hours or even days if not addressed fever and at times mild jaundice can also develop things can get complicated if you leave it sometimes repeated long term inflammation can scar your gallbladder and even other organs around it like how a samosa vendor's hands get burned from hot oil over and over a really stubborn or massive stone might even break through the scarred gallbladder wall into the upper small intestine portion called duodenum or the main bile duct this can cause blockages further down the gut leading to more severe problems because of gut obstruction this can also block the main bile duct and cause jaundice and high fever let's look at a different situation before entering the intestine the common bile duct merges with the pancreatic duct the pancreas is a vital organ it produces insulin and several digestive enzymes tiny stones can also escape and block the common bile duct or even the pancreatic duct this can cause jaundice or life threatening conditions like acute cholangitis or acute pancreatitis you may experience intense pain in your upper abdomen that may spread to your back and a high fever we will discuss these conditions in greater detail in our subsequent videos if the stone negotiates through the opening into the intestine it can get excreted via feces and these issues can get resolved by itself provided that there was no major damage already just a quick review we talked about how and why gallstones cause symptoms now what about symptoms people think might be because of gallstones but usually are not let's go through them one by one excessive belching abnormal fullness after meals early satiety regurgitation of food or sore liquid abdominal bloating or distension excessive flatulence upper abdomen or chest burning nausea or vomiting without abdominal pain chest pain often these are caused by other problems sometimes issues related to the gut brain axis problems with your gut brain axis screw up how your gut and brain talk to each other yes they both talk to each other we'll cover that in a future video if you only have these symptoms and gallstones are the only findings on a scan chances are the gallstones are not to blame many of these symptoms do not show readily apparent abnormalities even on advanced scans this doesn't confirm that gallstones are causing these symptoms just because they are seen on the scans patients come with a wide variety of abdominal pain symptoms and frequently abdominal scanning shows only gallbladder stones sir william osler said listen to your patient they are telling you the diagnosis this is especially true for many gut problems some clinicians do not even bother to ask for symptoms of a patient before offering a surgical solution for gallbladder stones If the patient is lucky enough to have his symptoms due to gallstones then everything is fine but if something else was actually causing the symptoms then there's a problem i have seen quite a few patients with similar stories we sometimes genuinely encounter confusion in diagnosis and selecting the most effective treatment because of this people sometimes get the wrong diagnosis and treatment and i have been guilty of that however not knowing the complete details and offering a major surgical treatment or any other treatment major treatment just based on a scan report may not be a good idea sherlock holmes would agree he said it is a capital mistake to theorize before one has data insensibly one begins to twist facts to suit theories instead of theories to suit facts 
This is well understood by a good crime thriller. Just because someone's holding a gun at a murder scene doesn't mean they did it. Before accusing anyone, a clever detective gathers all the clues. Three abdominal organs which undergo surgical abuse are gallbladder, appendix and the uterus. People frequently have vague stomach issues and scans only show subtle problems in one of these organs. Lots of times, one of these organs gets taken out in surgery. Humans can likely survive without a gallbladder or appendix and a middle-aged woman can often live without a uterus with minimal long-term consequences. If humans had more organs like these, we doctors would have been quick to remove them without hesitation. I do not mean that these surgeries are sometimes wrongly performed with a bad intent. No doctor wants that. In fact, some patients may find these vague symptoms disappear completely after surgery for these organs. The symptoms may or may not be being caused by removal of that organ. The patient could become pain-free even if the pain is not caused by that organ or say gallstones in this example. This is called placebo effect. It's amazing. But just thinking you are healing can actually help you heal even if the medicine or a procedure does nothing. Some non-allopathic treatments also use this method very commonly. Unfortunately, placebo effect depends on random luck. If I were that patient, I wouldn't want my treatment to depend entirely on luck. It's crucial for patients to understand that the real benefits and risk of their treatment. Patients often come to the OPD and hand over scans and expect a treatment plan right away without any background story. When I ask for the details about the symptoms, trying to figure out the root cause, sometimes there is a weird silence with a blank stare. Probably their first thought is, this doctor is clueless. The problem is right there on the scans. I try my best to change that bad impression as the conversation progresses. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully, I have given you a deeper understanding, not just of the symptoms of gallstones, but why they happen. Don't settle for Dr. Google or Dr. Chat GPT as your only medical advisors. Look for the why, not just the what. See you next time on Gut Instincts. Bye.